Hey again. So today I want to talk about Windows messages. Even though most people know me as a Mac guy, I actually have far more water under this bridge working with Windows. And I've worked with Windows pretty much since version 3 uh, and a little bit before that, but actually programming it uh, only really from version 3 onwards. My original beginnings with Windows was one of sort of awe and wonder. And there was a moment of absolutely terrifying experience the minute I worked out how Windows uh, messaging works. So the first thing we have to understand is what is a window in Windows? At its very, very basic level, it's just a rectangle on the screen. However, that rectangle, known as a window, has other windows inside of it. They could be buttons, they could be text boxes. Every control that you see in Windows is actually a window as well in its own right. The only difference is, as a child window, it doesn't have the big border around that the main window has, also known as the parent window. Now, each window is given a unique ID. This is called the window handle, and it's normally written as HWIND. So every window that has a unique ID can be sent messages telling it, here's what's going on in the rest of the operating system. This is how, when you move your mouse pointer over a button, for instance, it may change color because a message has been delivered to the parent window saying, hey, you need to tell this window down here that the mouse is over it so it can go and repaint itself in the new color. How does this work? Windows is made up of layers. Each of these layers has a specific function. And the further up you go, the closer to the application you are, and the further down you go, the closer to the hardware you are. What happens if you move a mouse pointer, for instance? As you move your mouse, a event is generated. That event is the mouse move event. So this mouse move event has to be sent to somebody so that they can actually respond to it. What happens is one of those layers called the messaging subsystem, it receives the information that the mouse has moved, but it then generates basically a letter or a postcard that says, dear window this number, this event has just happened, Here's maybe some other information about it, such as the X and Y coordinate of the mouse where it was and where it is now or something like that. And uh, yeah, any other extraneous information that you need will be found in the uh, box below. So that, that is the message. Now, what does the message look like? Well, to the computer, it's just a whole bunch of numbers. Much in the same way that you can look at a telephone number and just see a string of digits, but you know that the first couple of digits are the area code and the rest of it is the actual phone number for the person in that area. Same thing happens with Windows message. Certain digits will be for here's where it's coming from, here's where it's going to, here's what the message is, here's the parameters that go along with this message. This is then put into a delivery system and it gets shuttled around Windows to the point where it gets delivered to a window. When it gets delivered to a window, there's basically a mailbox that message goes into the mailbox and when the window has finished doing whatever it's doing at the moment, it periodically checks the mailbox, is there any messages for me? When it finds the message, it will then open it up and go, oh, this is from so-and-so. Oh, apparently we've changed the mouse pointer. Here's the new coordinates. Okay, I better go and tell that button that, you know, we have to redraw. So the routine that does this is called the window procedure and it's also written down as WindProc. This WindProc, whilst it allows Windows to operate, it is also nine times out of 10, the cause of where all of the uh, security problems happen. You can, you can send a message to a window telling it that, hey, the mouse pointer has gone this way when in reality it went that way. Like the window doesn't know that, you know, that it's a fake message. And you know, this is how system components can talk to each other as well. You know, you select something in one window, it changes a picture in somewhere else. Like these messages are just flying around. When you realize that, okay, you've got this message system of just stuff flying around, <laughs> it suddenly becomes very, very scary because the amount of messages going through the system at any one time is just phenomenal. Like if you ever attach something to look at how many messages are being generated, you will see that this thing it is busier than an Amazon fulfillment center. You've got stuff flying everywhere. So as a programmer, when I first started learning how Windows works, 
I went from, okay, I don't understand how this works, it's magic. I went to, okay, now I understand how this works. This is really, really complicated. To the final bit, it was like, how on earth does this not crash more often than it does? So now you understand what a message is and what it's used for. One of the classic things with Windows is it tends to freeze sometimes and applications become unresponsive and uh, you know, people often blame Windows for this, but it's not actually really Windows fault on the whole, it's normally down to the application programmer of whatever the particular app is that you're using that is at fault. Now, here's why. There are two types of mailman in Windows. The first one is the send message mailman. And this is basically like me going to the mailbox. I just drop my message into the mailbox and at some point in the next you know, 24 hours, a mailman will come along, empty it and go and distribute the messages that are inside that mailbox. And, and using that way, I don't really care if it's sitting there for an hour, a day, a week, whatever. The other way of doing it is using something called post message. Now post message uses a receipt system. So this would be like me sending a registered letter and I'm waiting to get told when that message has been processed. There could be a response to it as well. So understanding that sometimes things are waiting for something to respond this is where some of these hangs sometimes happen. On top of this, messages are prioritized. Now, an event like a mouse move, that comes before everything else pretty much. So the reason behind this is, let's say your app is busy doing something and there's a cancel button and you want to click the cancel button, that click to stop whatever it's doing should be able to jump to the front of the queue and say, hey, you need to stop what you're doing. And then after that, any other messages that now no longer applied, well, they can just be ignored because the app knows that we've already stopped whatever it was that we were doing. When you understand this, this is why sometimes you will notice that Windows freezes for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, and you're sitting there, you're just mashing the mouse button, you're wiggling it around. What you're actually doing is you're filling up that queue with so many messages that the busy application at some point is going to go, phew, I finished processing this data, whoa, and all of a sudden all of this information suddenly hits. What you'll then see is things like the, uh, you know, you, you'll start hearing sort of, audio going dong, 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 and you'll have things moving around and things are flashing and yeah, you know, all of the messages that were in the system queued up are now just like barreling like Niagara Falls into the wind proc. If that app wasn't written properly to take into account that something has been canceled or whatever, it's just gonna sit there and process all of those messages. So this is why it's never a good idea to sit there wiggling the mouse around and banging the keyboard and trying to make it work. Like do it once or twice, but if that doesn't work, just be patient, right? Now, on top of this, there's the other problem that the queue, the mailbox, can only actually hold a certain number of messages. How many times have you sat there pressing buttons and wiggling the mouse and stuff, and eventually after about 60 seconds, every time you move the mouse, you start hearing an audio noise coming out of Windows. It could be sort of a click, 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 you know. So that noise is basically Windows is going like, hey, you've just absolutely stuffed your message queue, like you've you've literally connected a fire hose to the message queue and you're just like building pressure in it. And basically the system can't handle it. It has to process the messages. Sometimes you'll notice that Windows says an application is not responding. How does it know the application is not responding? Let's imagine a window has just been brought to the forefront. Windows will say to it, hey, I've got an event for you. You've just come to the front. It will send it using the post message. What then happens is it's waiting for the window to go, yeah, okay, I've got that message, thank you very much, I will now repaint myself. If it doesn't get that, it will then ask you, it's like, hey, this app isn't responding, do you, know, do you want me to close it? Do you want me to go see if there's a known problem here? <laughs> That's what's going on. So, now you understand what Windows messages are and why it's never actually a good idea to sit there mashing the keyboard <laughs> and wiggling your mouse all over the place. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what I wanted to cover today. I hope that's been interesting for you and at least open your eyes as to what's going on and speak to you soon. Bye.